Warning, this content is for entertainment and educational purposes only. This video is brought to you by First Detachment Nutrition. Battle tested, expert formulated. Use discount code AB10 at checkout for 10% off. All right, Jim Bros, it's Big Paul here today. We are going to talk about what the pros really take. How much gear, steroids, do the pros really take? There are a lot of myths. There's a lot of just untruths about what pros take, and it's really infuriating. Half the stuff you see on Reddit and some of these other threads and whatnot, people, social media, most of the stuff is just completely made up BS, people that have no idea. And we are going to dig into all that. I am going to talk about what I actually see guys taking, how much they take, and I'm going to talk about some stupid cycles that I've seen bros post up on social media and in Reddit that they speculate that they think these top pros take, which is just completely fabricated and untrue. We're going to dig into all that in just one second. All right, so I want to show you an example of a stupid bro cycle that I saw posted on social media that some dude said, this is what pros really take. And I can promise you, it ain't what pros really take. There may be some dummy out there that, that somewhere that's done it. He's probably not a pro. One of the things that you have to think about if you want to be a pro is that you have to sustain enough success over a long period of time, probably 10 years or so, to be able to gain the size that is required to be an open class pro. And if you go balls to the wall out of the gate, you're not going to survive long enough to accomplish those sorts of things that are required to achieve that sort of size. Just impossible. So this cycle is absolutely idiotic. I saw somebody post this up and say that this is actually what pros take. I'm going to break it down for you, and I'm going to show you why it's stupid. So this guy said that pros are taking 5,000 milligrams of test, 3,000 milligrams of EQ, 3,000 milligrams of trend, 3,000 milligrams of DECA. <laughs> yeah, we're just getting started here. Those are just the injectables. So we're talking about a total injectable load of... 14,000 milligrams per week, 14 grams. Then we get to the orals. We have 200 milligrams of Winstraw per day, which is 1,400 milligrams per week. We have 150 milligrams of Halotestin per day, which is 1,050 milligrams of Halotestin per week. I don't know who the hell's taking that. We have 200 milligrams of Provirant per day, which is 1,400 milligrams per week. I don't know why you would need Proviron if you're taking all this other shit. For a total oral load of 3,850 milligrams per week. So if we look at this, we have 14,000 milligrams of injectables. We have basically 4,000 milligrams of orals. We're talking about a total load of 18 grams of gear per week. And then this moron is saying on top of it that they're taking 20 units of HGH per day. I, what? I, I literally don't know where anybody would get this from. It's just completely fabricated. Now, is there some idiot out there somewhere that's tried this at some point? Possibly. And I can tell you how you know the person that takes a super high dose like this or does something extreme like this. They don't live very long. It's that simple. So let's break this down. Let, let's look at the logistics of how stupid this is. So it, when we take a look at it here, we have 250, test comes dosed at 250 milligrams per milliliter. So we're talking about 20 cc's of testosterone per week. EQ is typically dosed at 300 milligrams per milliliter. So we're talking about 10 cc's of oil per week for equipoise. 
Trend is typically dosed somewhere between 100 and 150 milligrams per milliliter. Let's be generous here and say it's 150, not 100. So we're talking about 20 cc's of Trend per week. And the DECA is usually uh, dosed at somewhere around 300 milligrams per milliliter. We are talking about 10 cc's of DECA per week. This is a total of 60 cc's of oil that this idiot is suggesting that is being ejected per week. Now, do you really think, logically, sitting back thinking about this, that somebody is injecting 60 cc's of oil per week? That is just impossible. I, 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 I don't know who's injecting 60, 60 cc's of oil per week. Your muscles would be deformed. You would have all sorts of scar tissue. You would have lumps all over you. It you'd be in so much pain from just the mass amount of oil that you're injecting, you would not even be able to work out hard. I, you know, I have pushed, me personally, I pushed up over two grams before and the amount of oil you have to inject, inject for that was just causing pain and issues. You know, like if I did, if I did, let's say Primabolin, the day before a leg day and I injected into my quad, my sometimes my lot, uh, quads would be so sore from the permeable and injection that I couldn't train hard. So if you can't train hard, you can't grow. With this total oral load, I you're just the halo testing alone a couple weeks of running this. I've run I've run orals up, I don't know, I think the the highest I've ever taken orals up is a is like a gram a week of orals. And my ALT and AST were something like 500. <laughs> and I felt horrific. I felt horrific. There is no way that you could feel good taking that many orals and be able to train hard enough. And you would completely roast your liver after a period of time for running orals like that. There's just no way. The, the one straw alone would make you feel terrible. Now, guys may be running short loads of stuff like this at the end of contest prep. I have seen some nutty stuff at the end of contest prep. That is for sure. Yeah, but this is just ridiculous. This guy also suggests that somebody is taking 20 units of pharma HGH uh, per day. Let's let's think about the math on that. <laughs> pharma H HGH is incredibly expensive. That's probably somewhere around $100 of HGH, maybe probably more, to be honest with you. Uh, I've seen pharma HGH, but you know, you know, so the, on the cheap side, let's just say that's a hundred dollars worth of pharma HGH per, per day. And there's 365 days per year. So we're talking about $37,000 a year in pharma grade HGH. Most pro bodybuilders are broke as a joke. And only like the top maybe five or ten guys in the world are actually making any money outside of training people and you know doing whatever they're doing. Most of these dudes just have regular jobs. They're just they're just like you and I. They they have their regular day job and they they make a little bit of money off of bodybuilding, but it's it's just a side gig for them. It's just something they do. People, it's not like they're backing backing up the Brinks truck as you would for an NFL player. So I don't see any pro bodybuilder except maybe the very top guys running 36 or $37,000 a year worth, worth of HGH. That seems utterly ridiculous to me. And the cost of the gear too. I mean, this is, this is probably, you know, just off the top of my head, probably 70, $80,000 worth a year, a year worth of gear. I, I just, you know, these guys aren't even making that much. That, that's after taxes. So you'd probably, pre-tax, you'd probably have to make like 140, 150 grand a year just to pay for your gear alone. So that alone, just doing the math on, on the financial aspect of it and the logistics of it makes it, it just, that alone makes it impossible. So I don't know where people come up with these idiotic ideas. It's literally just made up bullshit. It's just completely made up. Let, 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 let's let's move on from this. You know, we, we, we know that stuff like this is just completely garbage. There is a limited rate of protein, muscle protein synthesis. There is only so much muscle protein synthesis you can generate in a given period of time. It doesn't matter how much gear you take. 
you can't bypass a certain amount of muscle protein synthesis in a given period of time. And we can look at specific examples of this. We know the guys that are at the top of the sport, how much muscle they gain per year. Somebody like Big Rami, somebody like Nick Walker. You can look at Nick Walker as an example. He put on 100 pounds of stage weight in a 10-year period of time. Now, granted, it's not linear. He probably did 20 pounds his first year, 15 is second, and then 10, and then eight, and whatever from from from, from then on out. If, for example, if let's say that Nick went from five grams a year, or four grams a year, or three grams a year, or two grams a year, whatever he ran, if he went up to this stupid 20 grams of gear number, he's really not going to generate much more muscle protein synthesis. There's, there's a limited rate of how much muscle protein synthesis you can generate in a given period of time. And Nick is an example of somebody who does everything perfectly. This is a guy who eats properly. This is a guy that trains hard. This is a guy that's not out partying and being stupid. So he's doing everything the ideal way that it needs to be done. And there's only a certain amount of muscle protein synthesis he can generate. So I don't know why some gym bro who's not following a structured diet thinks that he could get away with doing this and be even bigger than Nick Walker. So Nick Walker is doing everything the, the perfect way. And so what, what I see, what I see most pros do, first of all, like I said, you have to be able to survive long enough. You have to have a cycle that is sustainable for a period of time that it takes to put on that size. We look at Nick Walker, we look at Big Rami, we look at Ronnie Coleman, all of these past guys, Dorian Yates, you can look at any of them. It is roughly 10 years of gear use to get to the size to be an Olympia competitor in an open class bodybuilding. You may not need that long for a men's physique guy. You probably don't need that long to be a classic physique guy. You could probably cut that time in half. But to be a 260-pound mass monster on stage, it's probably going to take 10 years of gear use. If you are running full throttle like this, you are not going to make it 10 years. You're going to fall over dead. Or you're going to have health issues. You can see examples of it. There, there's guys out there that press the gas pedal down. I can think of a few guys off the top of my head that I'm not going to name that got their pro card and then they were completely roasted by the time they got their pro card and they could never compete on the pro level because they went too hard and they had no gas left in the tank. So you have to sort of space this out, be somewhat conservative. I, I, I'm not saying super conservative, but there there is a curve of dosing. When you think about dosing, there is an optimal dosing range for putting on size. And once you get past that optimal dosing range, you get to a point where you're just piling up more side effects with very little additional muscle protein synthesis. And really, if we're trying to get bigger, all we're trying to do is generate muscle protein synthesis. So something like this versus like, let's say if we scaled this down to two grams, I, you, the, the difference in growth between this and two grams in a, let's say a 12 month period of time, is probably only about 10% difference. You might gain an extra pound or two of muscle, and then you're fried at the end of that year and you can't do it again. I've literally seen guys run protocols, these super high dose protocols, and then they're nuked and they can never compete again. I've seen it a million times over. If you want to achieve this sort of size, you have to slowly work your way up. And the way you do it is to use the minimum effective dose. You find an optimal range. And as you get bigger, you're going to need more. I'm not saying that more doesn't work. It certainly does. But think about it in terms of alcohol. Let's think about it in terms of alcohol. <laughs> when you're drinking, there, there's an optimal range to get drunk. And once you push past that optimal range, like let's say it takes you eight beers to get drunk. If you drink 20, you're not going to get, be, you know, you're not going to be three times as drunk as you would if you drank eight beers. You're just going to be sicker. And it's the same way with this stuff, man. There's only so far you can push it. There's only so much you can gain. And you have to find that optimal range. You sort of want to be in the sweet spot where you can maintain your health 
continue to grow and not have issues and be able to sustain it over a 10 year period of time. So what do the pros really take? Let's think about this. What do the pros really take? Guys that are at that elite level, I, I, I've talked to a ton of pros. I've seen what they take. I know legitimately what they take. I've seen cycles. I've seen some crazy stuff. I've seen some some guys that that I'm also shocked that don't take hardly anything that are that are huge. So what I've generally seen is like the big open class guys are running somewhere between two to three grams in the off season. That seems to be the sweet spot for them. Now you wouldn't come out of the gate with that if you're a young guy just getting started out. You don't need that much. You're you're not big enough. It would be like eating 6,000 calories and trying to bench press 400 pounds when you're 175 pounds. You're just going to get fat and injured. <laughs> so a bigger body, more androgen receptors requires more gear. So that it, it's, it's really that simple. So, and a lot of times your best gains that you're going to have are going to be on your first cycle, which is usually something very conservative, like 250 to 500 milligrams of testosterone only. You're probably going to have the best gains you ever have in your life. That is going to be the cycle that you gain the most on. And after that, it's it's descending gains after that. As I mentioned with Nick Walker, the incremental decrease in gains from year to year. And it takes more to even to gain that additional muscle. And then you do reach a point where you hit your genetic capacity to add muscle and there's only so far you can go. Like I had a guy the other day ask me, I was like, how much bigger do you think Big Rami can get? And I'm like, I don't think he can. I think he's at pretty much his genetic limit. I don't I don't think Big Rami, he's 40 years old or whatever he is. I really don't think there's much more he can add. I think he's at his limit. So there's only so far you can push it. And once you get to a certain size, you can actually pull back down and sort of coast. The guys that I see that press the gas down the hardest are usually the guys that are trying to turn pro. They're on the cusp of turning pro. And once you're pro, you can dial it back a bit, preserve your career, and make some money. So there's there's no sense, you know, unless you're vying to be Mr. Olympia, if you're just sort of a middling pro, I would imagine you'd want to sustain your career for as long as you can so you can make some money, make a name for yourself, and... Uh, you know, have have a sustainable long-term outcome. And those guys usually run moderate doses. Once they get to a certain size, they can pull back a little bit. Now, I'm not saying more doesn't work, but there is a descending gain as you get to a certain size. So think about this logically, people. This stuff that people are posting up on the internet makes zero sense. Zero sense whatsoever. It's just they're throwing a bunch of spaghetti up against the wall and watching what sticks to the wall. And then some poor dumb kid thinks that this is the way that is things are being done. I've most of the, I, I'll tell you, from working with people and consulting people, the people that I've seen run the largest amounts are usually the guys that don't even look like they lift weights. I've seen it over and over and over again. It's the 185 pound dude running a shit ton of gear and he thinks that's the answer. And it's not <laughs> it's not always the answer. Now there, there are many other aspects to it. You have to have your diet buttoned up. You have to be training hard. You have to be consistent with things. There are so many factors in here. And yes, the gear is part of it. And it does work. All right, folks. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. If you think I'm completely full of shit, which evidently some people do. Fine, that's fine. You know. <laughs> but I appreciate each and every one of you watching. Uh, please support my sponsor, First Detachment. They make quality supplements formulated by the man himself, Justin Harris. If you want to support me, support them, please. My discount code is AB10. Use that at checkout for 10% off. And if you want to get in contact with me, my contact information is below in the video description. Rock on, guys. For coaching or consultations, head over to www.anabolicbodybuilding.com to book your spot today. I can help you with optimizing hormones, fat loss, muscle gain, physique, athletic performance, nutrition, and health. For more information, shoot me an email at bigp3rd at gmail.com.